Let's talk Kyle. He was at the owners' meetings, and this is an interesting... The owners' meetings are interesting. It's basically two brief press conferences, not so brief, half hour, but informal. Informal press conferences early in the morning, and then a big reception. And the reception is kind of the main event, and it's not... You don't, it's not press conferences. It's like you, you put your phones away and you go and you mingle. And Vince Carter is there and freaking like people are there that you wouldn't. Charles Woodson's there. All the coaches are there and they're with their kids. You see them in a whole different way. Like they're not, they're not the face of the organization at that moment. They're just having a nice time. And um, I don't know. Kyle, that's not really Kyle's element. Kyle's element is like football. We are, you know. Mm -hmm the day-to-day -day stuff of the NFL. Mm -hmm. Seeing him with his hair down, I didn't see him. He wasn't really at the reception. I don't know if he made a brief appearance, but I never saw him let his hair down. Uh, and it made a, it brought up a question. You, you brought up this question. Maybe think of it again. Mm -hmm. What would these coaches do if they didn't have football? Like, right. I know Robert Sala pretty well. I spent 20, 25 minutes talking to him because he's, there's, there's a normal person there. And he was at the, the reception and, he, it's so clear to me if there wasn't football, he'd be on Wall Street or he'd be the CEO of an organization. He'd be making a lot of money doing, he'd be an expert at something else. Mm -hmm. What would Kyle be doing if there was no football? I really don't know. Um, and that's really the issue. Um, and that's kind of the crux of the, 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 the premise of what would coaches be outside of football because that's what makes you successful in football. I feel like uh, there's lifers, there's people that have been in football, their entire families have been in football. But one of the reasons why they're there for so long is that they have other elements in their lives. Um, and quite frankly, in their entire family's lives that kind of keep them grounded so they don't get washed up into the, the rigmarole of, football, uh, of the season. I mean, the NFL is a beast. It will not stop. And it doesn't stop. It's It's not designed to. And if you don't have something outside of it, or if you're not grounded or rooted as a person outside of this stuff, then you're never really going to be able to keep yourself from being caught up while you're in it. Um, and just for context, like, you know, we, we floated this idea, um, and this, this narrative a couple of times, but just look at some of the head coaches around and not as just coaches, but look at some of the men that are holding these positions, right? Like, you know, if John Harbaugh decided like, hey, one day, it, John Harbaugh decided one day, you know what, guys, the city of Baltimore has pricked my heart, man, and I just, um, I see the issues here, and I'm going to open up a church, and I'm going to become a youth pastor and start doing youth outreach. People would be shocked, but nobody would, nobody would shun at the idea of John Harbaugh character-wise taking on that profession. The same thing with coaches like Mike Vrabel. If Mike Vrabel decided, yo, you know what, guys, I've been here in Memphis I've been in this city. I know these people. I want to run for the sheriff of this town, and I want to get into law enforcement and clean this town up. Nobody would bat an eye. We would be shocked that we'd be giving up the money. But if he followed his heart for who he is character-wise, what this man has shown us as a person for all of these years, everybody would be able to make that jump. Pete Carroll, the best motivational speaker waiting to happen. Andy Reid looks like your baker or your local plumber or your or your postman, right? There's guys all over the place. Mike Tomlin could run for mayor. He could be a politician. Bill Belichick, Bill, Marv Levy, and Brian Billick, some of the smartest men, not coaches, not coaches, but some of the smartest men that you have ever heard speak and been around, and they would – they would be walking the halls of some of the greatest colleges, institutions as professors to this day, if you know the type of men that these guys are. And just, I feel like in certain instances, you just have to ask yourself outside of football, outside of being a boy genius with understanding play calling and sequencing and knowing you're having a full Rolodex of not only your career in football, but your father's career in football. What are you? What are you outside of the X's and O's? What, what type of characteristics about you shine through that supersede football? Where it's like, hey, Kyle does not like this. Kyle's not going to stand for this. This is what Kyle is into. These are the things. Like, who, who is the man? And I feel like in certain instances, when we're trying to win these tough games, when they're letting us play, they're kind of swallowing their whistles and tucking in their, their flags, 
how you operate your team in the in this most serious parts of games is a reflection on your effect on them as a man. And we all know being a leader is reflective upon the followers. It all runs downhill. And those are just some of the things that I was touching on before with Kyle as far as who is he? How is he going to move forward uh, with pivoting, doing something new once he gets it, once the, uh, once the season starts? We have guys that have come into the enclave like uh, uh, with like Brandon Staley and other coordinators that have come in. Is Kyle going to give up more room to let them be to let them grow? So these are the things that um, we just want to ask. Where you know, at first, I feel like in a way. This question was hard to ask because Kyle kind of had the tab of being the wonder kid, the new kid on the block, one of the youngest coaches to get hired. There's no need to asking who he is. We already know who he is. He's a young kid burgeoning, trying to do his best. Now that he's in his 40s, it's like we need more. What are you? Who are you? How are you going to how are you going to get grown men to follow you outside of the guys that grew up with you? And that's the vibe that I get from this team. It's not the fact that Kyle is an adult and he's running the team like a man over the team. Kyle grew up with these guys. They all were young together. They all were given a chance together and they all became who they were and they all got the same accolades together. So that's why they're so banded close to each other. That's why you have the Cabo click because he treats these guys like they're his peers, but he needs to step out of that. You can't party with your people, man. You cannot party with your people and that's that's something that every boss knows across any industry it's time yeah and it's like if if the if so, bill walsh wouldn't have been nothing without football he would have been extremely successful in whatever he chose and i think that's like you said that might be an issue with kyle and why he's not a champion like <clears throat> can you excel at anything or can you excel at one thing are you the kind of guy who's driven and disciplined enough to be a success in something you weren't, you didn't grow up around? Or do you have one skill uh, that you take for granted? I don't even know. Like, that's the question for him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We can't answer that one. Uh, LouTube says, supporting both Grant and Coach for the dope content. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. it. Fish and chips. Lil Shanny got a camera in either of your rooms? I hope not. But you just never know. <laughs>